Hello friends! Today I would like to share with you my experience treating uh, insomnia with acupuncture. In particular, I would like to focus on the insomnia caused by the hot flashes. It's a rather common um, presentation in practice when a person would wake up because of hot flashes and then they cannot go back to sleep. And so today I would like to begin my presentation by um, meditating on the um, energetic foundations of this imbalance, followed by the patterns, um, treatment strategies, and finally I'm going to share some of the points that I think are essential uh, for the treatment of this imbalance. And so let us begin. The very core foundation of any imbalance that deals with the hot flashes is kidney yin insufficiency. And as you know, kidney is the foundation of all energies in the body. And we have yin and yang of the kidneys that balance each other. Because yin and yang are there are a dialectical opposites. And so they mutually control and also engender each other. And with the decline of yin phase, you see yin is represented by the inverted or, or uh, the triangle that points down. Yang becomes uncontrolled, it loses control, and it flares up. And because of the nature of Yang energy, which is up and out, like that, it travels up to the heart and disturbs Shen, the spirit. Shen. Shen becomes disturbed because of the heat that enters, um, that flares up because of kidney deficiency. And how do we know that there is kidney deficiency? Well, because there are hot flashes um, typical to um, uh, kidney deficiency sim are symptoms such as lower back pain, dryness, especially dryness in the throat because uh, kidney channel enters into the throat. Uh, decline in hearing acuity um, because kidneys open into the ear and definitely um, uh, sp not spontaneous but nighttime sweating because nighttime is when yin chi is being generated and because yin is insufficient yang help tries to help yin to be generated but yin is insufficient and so yang escapes and at the times of the fluctuations when um, when the yin energy ebbs then yang energy flares up causing heat and night sweats and so this is the foundational issue uh, this is the foundational pattern uh, when we deal with insomnia due to hot flashes however there are other patterns that might may um, arise simultaneously with kidney yin deficiency. And these patterns are liver yin deficiency. So you see I'm writing shu for deficiency because deficiency is shu. This is the character in Chinese. So for the abbreviation, I call it liver yin shu. And another pattern is uh, heart and kidneys not communicating. Okay, let us um, turn to the five element charts uh, to understand the energetics of these imbalances. And as you know, uh, kidney is represented by the water phase. This is kidney, right? And this is the water phase. Then we have water, wood, fire, earth, metal. And uh, the um, and the liver is represented by the wood phase. And if kidney yin is insufficient, is water, if when water phase is insufficient, it fails to nourish the wood phase and uh, wood phase becomes insufficient, uh, insufficient as well, resulting in liver yin deficiency. And so in reality, liver yin deficiency is a mutual deficiency of kidney yin and liver yin deficiency, okay? 
And so you're going to have all the symptoms of kidney deficiencies plus symptoms characteristic to liver deficiency. And the most telling sign is are the eyes. Why? Because liver channel opens into the eyes and uh, the person with liver yin deficiency is going to have eye dryness or floaters or some other visual disturbances. Uh, another characteristic feature of liver yin deficiency are the emotional symptoms. Why? Because liver wood element is the uh, uh, general of chi, and so wood energy is um, is expensive. It grows, okay. It's um, um, it's about accomplishing uh, things, and um, when liver uh, phase becomes insufficient, there is a stagnation. It cannot it cannot really break through the barriers as it's supposed to. Because think about the yin uh, phase. The best, the best image of uh, liver yin is the grass that is pushing through the concrete. Okay, so it seems very subtle, very gentle, and at the same time, it's pushing up. Um, but this insufficiency does not allow for the uh, energy to be directed properly, and as a result, we start having emotional issues, uh, anger. Also, characteristics of characteristic for. Um, patients with this pattern is they are obsessing about their work or any other projects and so they uh, cannot shut off their mind they it's always in, in you know it's always present even when they're trying to sleep why because um, this liver this expensive energy is being mismanaged yet another very common telling uh, symptom of uh, liver yin deficiency is the timing when uh, people are when your patient's going to wake up. It's going to be between one and three a.m. Why? Because if you look at this chart, this is a Chinese biological clock. We have gallbladder active, most active at midnight. Then liver meridian is going to be active, most active at two p.m. Two, I'm sorry, two a.m. Uh, but the time of the liver channel is between 1 a.m. to 3 a.m. And so when, when people are waking up at this time, it tells us that when chi arise, arrives at the liver channel, they're waking up. That's because of the insufficiency in the liver channel. Okay. Next pattern that we need to discuss is the heart and kidneys not communicating and also we need to turn to the five elements chart to understand the energetic dynamics of this pattern as i've already said liver and uh, kidneys are in the mother daughter relationship but the water element and the fire element are in grandmother and daughter relationship it's a control cycle and when we deal with the insufficiency of kidney of the water phase it results in excess of the heart phase and the heart phase uh, i'm sorry of the fire phase and the fire phase is represented by the heart channel and so you're going to have a simultaneous kidney in insufficiency and heart she the uh, um, um, abundance over over abundance she is the um, ripening or fullness um, and so what are the symptoms of excess of the fire phase or excess in the heart heart fire heart heat in the heart you will see that person is also going to have emotions, but that's going to be mostly anxiety versus anger or frustration. You're also going to have uh, symptoms that are strictly related to the um, heart organ, which are palpitations. And 
and you may also have irregular heartbeats. Okay, and so that uh, when it comes to the heart kidney not communicating. There is no one particular time when this insomnia takes place, but there is another uh, telling um, symptom which differenti differentiates this pattern from other patterns. In addition to anxiety and palpitations, the person will also have difficulty falling asleep. Whereas, let's say, with liver and kidney indeficiency, usually the patient can fall asleep just fine, but they wake up prematurely. In case of heart and kidney not communicating, uh, a patient will often have difficulty falling asleep. Okay. But let us meditate uh, a bit more on this chart, the um, horary clock or the, the biological clock. And let us examine what happens, let's say, at midnight, or to be more precise, between 11 p.m. and 1 a.m. This is the time of the gallbladder meridian. Well, we know that the gallbladder meridian is the yin pair, or I'm sorry, is the yang pair of the liver channel. It's a yin yang pair. And therefore, if a person is waking up between 11 p.m. and 1 a.m., the gallbladder time, with hot flashes. It's a clear indication of yin deficiency that is relatable to the liver yin insufficiency. And so we are going to be looking still at the kidney yin insufficiency and liver yin insufficiency when your patient is waking up at that time. Well. Let us look at the time between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m., the time of the lung channel. If the patient is waking up at that time, this is the lung channel involvement. And therefore, we should be looking into mutual lung and kidney insufficiency. Why? Because as we know that metal element corresponds with the lung channel, and in case of kidney insufficiency, child is going to drain its mother, the lung, and lung yin also becomes insufficient. And then they're going to treat mutual kidney and lung yin deficiency. What are the other characteristics of lung yin deficiency? Well, they're going to have some sort of respiratory issues that may, may be as simple as um, condensed phlegm, small amounts of condensed phlegm in the morning, or just dry mouth and throat. They may have some respiratory issues, or they may be just waking up at that time and no other symptoms. However, if you look at the tongue of such a patient, you will see, you know, that the anterior one-third of the tongue is uh, representative of the lung meridian and you're going to see a crease that is not quite reaching the tip of the tongue the that would be the lung yin deficiency crease another characteristic crease um, indicative of lung yin deficiency is the 45 degree or rather 45 degree creases on each side of the um, tongue in the anterior anterior one third and then we know that we need to build up lung yin Yet, I would like to share with you um, one more pattern which is not directly related to kidney yin deficiency, but very common uh, in presence of kidney yin deficiency. And um, that would be waking up with nocturia. Nighttime urination. Very common, right? What is the mechanism there? As you can see, directly opposite to the lung channel, it's midnight, midday pair, is the bladder channel. And so when Qi arrives at the lung meridian, when the lung meridian is at its fullest, 
chi at the blood meridian at its weakest. And if person is, if your patient is waking up because they need to go to the bathroom, it's a clear indication that the blood chi is weakened. And so it cannot, it cannot hold urine and the person has to uh, go to the bathroom. And the yin-yang pair of the bladder is the kidney channel. Yes, that's right. And therefore we need to still strengthen the kidney and also, but we need to be paying closer attention to kidney yang, which is the bladder channel. But we also have to, we have to strengthen uh, both kidney yin and kidney yang simultaneously, but paying closer attention to kidney yang. So these are all patterns that I wanted to discuss with you. And what about the treatment? Um, well, clearly, if we deal with kidney yin insufficiency, the first thing that we need to do is to nourish kidney yin or nourish yin. That would be number one. We deal with insufficiency heat and therefore we need to clear heat. We deal with insomnia, and therefore our next therapeutic action should be to calm Shen. Next, we know that we deal with the water phase, and water, deal with, uh, and water phase deals exactly with that, with water. And so therefore we have to regulate waterways. We don't want to have any stagnation of water. Besides, as you know, water in the organism is called jin ye, thin fluids, and ye, thick, thick fluids, hormones. So we need to regulate the hormones in order to, uh, for our uh, ther therapeutic um, system to work. Finally, in addition to dealing with the water phase, we, deal with, we often deal with either wood phase or the metal phase. And these two phases deal with qi, right? And therefore we need to, number five, regulate Qi. And this is the fivefold uh, therapeutic um, model to deal with this type of insomnia. And we are going to primarily focus on the kidney and insufficiency because, as you can see, all of these patterns involve um, kidney and insufficiency. And then you can always find points to tweak up in order to address insufficiencies in your particular phase where you see fit. And so, two very first points to nourish kidney in would be kidney three and kidney six. You can also add kidney one the most yin point on the body. It's located on the sole of the foot. It's a great anchoring point, right? And you can see that it also clears heat and it affects the orifices. It calms Shen. A uh, great overall point. Another point to nourish yin would be possible. I'm not telling you to use all of these points, by the way. You can always choose the points that uh, fit your particular uh, clinical presentation, but Shen. is another great point to nourish yin. When it comes with when it comes to clearing deficiency heat, this is not a very straightforward uh, therapeutic action. Why? Because um, in addition to the heat which is generated inside the kidney channel, the liver channel and the metal and the lung channel, um, 
we're, where we, we should be clearing um, a, a deficiency heat. Heat has the tendency, as I said, to escape and to rise up, and so it's going to rise into the yang channels. And so we need to determine which yang channels um, receive this deficiency heat and clear clear heat from that as well. But this is a separate. Uh, unfortunately, this is a, this is a big discussion that I hope uh, that we can uh, access separately. But generally speaking, to clear heat from the yin channels, we want to use fire phase. And so we can use kidney 2, liver 2, or lung 10 to clear deficiency heat. Don't have to use all of these points. Choose the ones that are relevant. In particular, kidney 2 and liver 2 would be most, most um, relevant. When it comes to uh, calming Shen, the very generic but um, very eff effective point combination is heart 7 plus pericardium 6. It's a classic. Always works. Um, and especially when you deal with, when you already have kidney 3, kidney 2, liver 2, um, you're going to be all set there. Now, uh, there are a few points that regulate waterways. Most prominent are bladder 22, the San Jiao Shu, right? Because San Jiao deals with water and fire. Um, bladder 39 regulate, regulates waterways. My favorite is severely underused point, San Jiao 9. Four Rivers Point, it regulates waterways. You can also use Sanjiao, uh, Sanjiao 6, clears heat. It doesn't say that it directly regulates waterways, but it's a fire fire um, point on the Sanjiao channel, so clears, clears Sanjiao, and therefore it's a very good point to regulate waterways. Ways. And finally, Spleen 9 is a great point to regulate waterways. Again, you don't have to use all of these points. Choose what is appropriate and use it accordingly. And then there are many points that regulate qi. Of course, we have Gen 17 that regulates qi. Uh, we have stomach 36 regulates qi. Spleen 6 regulates qi, great point to calm Shen. It's, always, it's very often used uh, um, in case of insomnia. Uh, gallbladder 34 regulates qi. This is the easiest category. Liver 14 uh, regulates qi. This is the easiest category. And again, uh, look for the channels, look, of, look, look, for, the, look for, uh, um, for the pulses. Pulses have to give you the clue. Uh, where you have tightness on the yang aspect of the pulse, you, you feel tightness, you need to regulate qi in that particular meridian. And so this is the complete strategy to, to, uh, to deal with insomnia due to uh, yin deficiency and, and hot flashes. Please try it and let me know how it works. And thank you for listening and I'll see you next time.